Today's main news headlines. PCDS 2030 drags Sarawak as green economy power. Sarawak leading the hydrogen economy in the ASEAN region. Sarawak Premier calls for Australian ASEAN cooperation to drive global green economy. Good evening. The post-COVID-19 Development Strategy, PCDS 2030, will drive Sarawak towards emerging as a respected green economic power in the region. Premier of Sarawak, Datu Patinggi Tan Sri Dr. Abang Abdul Rahman Zohari Tun Dato Abang Openg said PCDS 2030 has created a strong foundation for a durable and sustainable economy, balancing economic growth with care for the environment. He said PCDS 2030 also emphasizes the need for a diversified economy driven by data, innovation, inclusiveness, sustainability that ensures a visionary and responsible progress of Sarawak. Sarawak stands at the critical juncture where we must decouple GDP growth from unsustainable energy and resource consumption. This shift will not happen on its own. It requires Sarawak to embrace green economy policies to drive this transition. He said this while delivering the keynote at the Australia ASEAN 2024 Business Forum entitled The Powerhouse of Green Economy in ASEAN at the Sydney International Convention Centre, ICC, on Thursday. The Sarawak Premier highlighted that Sarawak's green economy policy focuses on three main goals, the first of which is to protect Sarawak's unique biodiversity and resources with complete dedication to nature. Second, we aim to elevate the quality of life for every Sarawakian while honouring and preserving our rich indigenous cultures. And third, the economy. We are committed to fostering inclusive growth through sustainable resource use, ensuring that our economic growth does not lead to an overconsumption of resources and high GSG emissions. Meanwhile, Datu Patinggi Abang Zohari says Sarawak is now emerging as a leader in the hydrogen economy among ASEAN countries in addition to achieving goals in renewable energy. He said Sarawak is now a major player in Malaysia's National Energy Transition Direction Plan by developing a green hydrogen hub that is driven by the extensive hydropower potential in this state. Sarawak is a key player to Malaysia's National Energy Transition Roadmap developing a green hydrogen hub. This is possible due to our vast hydropower potential. This new and exciting economy opens up numerous opportunities for investment. From developing new technology like electrolyzer and fuel cells to building energy storage systems and integrating use in the transport sectors. Speaking at the H2 Poland Forum in Posna recently, the Zarat Premier emphasised on the importance of global cooperation, effective policies and endless innovation towards building a sustainable future. He affirmed that Sarawak is not just pursuing sustainable energy and green economy, but is also committed to achieving net zero emissions. Ladies and gentlemen, by investing in green hydrogen and clean energy, we are moving beyond traditional industries like oil, gas, and timber. Our goal is clear, to boost economic productivity while reducing emissions by embracing innovation and clean energy we are working to ensure Sarawak builds a future that grows responsibly and serves as a model to others. 
Meanwhile, Dr. Patengi Abang Zohari called for greater cooperation between Australia and ASEAN countries to drive global green economy transformation in this region. In this regard, he stressed the need for innovation and cooperation in addressing environmental and economic challenges in the future. As we move forward, ladies and gentlemen, we need to decouple our economic growth from environmental impacts while ensuring that the growth is inclusive and distributed. We cannot do this alone. I invite all of you to strengthen the Australia-ASEAN partnership with us in innovation and economic collaboration. Meanwhile, six other invited speakers took the opportunity to discuss the vision of Sarawak's green economy, which was presented by Dato Patinggi Abang Zohari in a special discussion for about an hour. Speaking in a media conference, the Premier of Sarawak called on ASEAN countries and regional partners, including Australia, to agree in achieving the goal of reducing greenhouse gas. He said Malaysia, as the chairman of the ASEAN summit next year, needs to play an important role by facilitating the interaction between the ASEAN bloc and regional countries. Kita tidak hanya melihat daripada perspektif Sarawak saja, mungkin kita lihat daripada perspektif ASEAN dengan Australia. Dan tahun baru Malaysia akan jadi pengurusi ASEAN. Dan dalam hubung ini mungkin ada interaksi di antara ASEAN as a block dengan negara-negara jiran termasuk Australia, mungkin negara di timur jauh seperti Korea, Jepun, di mana mesti ada saya rasa satu matlamat bersama untuk mengurangkan gas emission itu saja dan dari sudut yang lain mencari solution kepada cara-cara kita untuk melaksanakan dasar tersebut Additionally to further develop the economy of this country and regional neighbors active efforts need to be played in reducing the carbon footprint According to him, close cooperation between ASEAN and countries like Australia is important in realising the vision of a green economy that is more inclusive and responsible for the environment. The forum in Sydney was the culmination of the Sarawak Premier's official working visit to Australia that began in Melbourne since 26 August. The Sarawak Premier is scheduled to return to Kuching on 30th August. More than 500 recipients were awarded with Sarawak State Honours completed by Yang Di Pertuan Negeri Sarawak, Tun Pehin Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi Tuan Jafar in Cebu on Thursday. Murum Assemblyman Kennedy Chukpai Ugon tops the list of recipients with the Dajah Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Sarawak, Johan Bintang Sarawak JBS. Also receiving the same honours are Junih Saleh Ahmad and Lau Siehi. Meanwhile, Talian Assemblyman Royston Valentine was awarded the Dajah Utama Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Kenyalang Sarawak, Johan Bintang Kenyalang, JBK. Other recipients include five for the Pingat Pentaperan Awam, Pingat Penghidmatan Cemelang, PPC, 17 recipients of the Pingat Perwira Negeri, PPN Bronze, seven recipients for the Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Sarawak, Pegawai Bintang Sarawak PBS and 35 recipients of the Principal Degree of the Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Kenyalang Sarawak, Pegawai Bintang Kenyalang PBK. This was followed by 55 recipients of the Pingat Pentadbiran Awam, Pingat Perkhidmatan Bakti, PPB, 90 recipients of the Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Sarawak Ahli Bintang Sarawak ABS, 58 recipients of the Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Kenyalang Sarawak Ahli Bintang Kenyalang ABK, 121 recipients of the Pingat Pentapera Awam category Pingat Perkhidmatan Terpuji PPT and 121 recipients of the Yang Amat Mulia Bintang Sarawak for Bentara Bintang Sarawak PBS. The Deputy Premier of Sarawak, Dato Amar Awang Tengah Ali Hassan, represented Sarawak as part of the Malaysian delegation that met with Sultan Hassan al Bolkiah of Brunei during the 25th Annual Leaders Consultation ALC25 between Malaysia and Brunei, held at the Istana Nurul Iman in Bandar Sri Begawan. 
The delegation led by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim also included Sabah Chief Minister Datuk Sri Hajiji Noor, Foreign Minister Datuk Sri Utama Muhammad Hassan, Minister of Investment, Trade and Industry Tengku Zafru Tengku Abdul Aziz, Minister of Higher Education Datuk Sri Zamri Abdul Kadir, Minister of Education Fadlina Sidek and several other dignitaries. During the discussions, Malaysia and Brunei agreed to enhance their collaboration in various sectors including tourism, education, investment, literature, technology and defence. At the same time, this collaboration is expected to bring significant benefits to Sarawak by stimulating economic growth, strengthening cultural relations and creating new opportunities in key sectors. Towards a new chapter, three bilateral instruments have been signed to further strengthen the diplomatic relations between the two countries, which have been established for 40 years. The three instruments include a first phase memorandum of understanding MOU on land border demarcation between Malaysia and Brunei, and MOU on transportation for aviation cooperation involving Brunei, Sarawak and Sabah, and an exchange of notes regarding the agreement to establish a temporary committee to coordinate maritime access. This matter was also announced by Datu Sri Anwar at a press conference held at Brunei International Airport before returning to Kuala Lumpur after his two-day visit to the neighbouring country. And that's the English edition with me, Jocelyn Goh. More news can be found in our official portal, ukas.sarawak.gov.my and social media platforms including Facebook and YouTube. We end the UCAS Bulletin today with a display of the Australia ASEAN Business Forum 2024 titled The Powerhouse of Green Economy in ASEAN, held at the Sydney International Convention Centre on Thursday. Hashtag Sarawak InfoMyC right yet. Have a good night.